Hi everyone, welcome to the coding channel. Today is the 29th episode of our Java programming tutorial series. And in this episode, we are going to talk about recursive methods in Java. This and more when we come back. Up to this point, we've been using while, do while, for loop whenever we needed um, to repeat something. And that method is called iteration. Okay, now in Java, there's another way of um, solving a problem uh, by not using the uh, iterative way. And that is by uh, having a recursive method. Now, what is exactly the recursive um, method? We can say that that is a recursive method if that method calls itself. Okay, and that process is actually called recursion. Okay, now to for you to better understand what I'm talking about, uh, let me show you the example first of an iterative um, method I have here. Inside of a main method, there is a method call trying to pass a five to the iterative method. Okay, so the, meaning the value of count here is uh, five. And then we have a repetition using while. And then once the condition is uh, false, we will just print out the go. Okay, so if we're going to run this, um, as you can see, it's just a, uh, a counter. Okay, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and then go. Okay, so we will uh, uh, have uh, a recursive method way. Okay, so we will convert this iterative method to a recursive um, method without using while, do while, or loop. Is it possible? Yes, okay, by using a recursive call. Now, uh, take note that whenever you create um, a recursive method, we need two important um, uh, main requirements. Okay, the first one, inside of our recursive method, there should be a recursive call. And then a base case or condition or a stop condition. Okay, because um, uh, in iteration, for example, if you don't have a um, condition okay when to stop the um, repetition so you'll end up having a uh, an infinite loop right same thing here in a recursive method if we don't put um, a base uh, case or a just to stop the uh, recursive call so you will end up having a uh, stack overflow so i will show that to you later okay so uh, let me um, now um, convert this try this to uh, to convert. So first, what are we going to do? Since we are going to print out a 54321 and uh, a method will uh, try now to pass 5, having the recursive method uh, call. Okay, so uh, the initial value of our count here is 5. So we will try to just copy this one and then paste it here. And we will try to output the, um, the 5. Okay, and then Instead of using while uh, loop here, or do while or for loop, okay, we will just use a recursive call. And how are we going to have a recursive call? You just have to specify, of course, the, the method name to call itself again. Okay, but this time, make sure that the second time around that we call the recursive method, we need to pass a count uh, with a value of force. Okay, so if we've started five, so the next time around, uh, for example, in this um, case, uh, it's like having, um, we need to minus one to the previous value of count. So we will just have to uh, put here count minus um, one. So this is now an example of a recursive call. Okay, so let me show you now. If we're going to run this without any base a case, okay, now take note what will uh, gonna happen. Okay, so we have a runtime error, and this um, error specifically is a uh, the what I'm talking about, the stack overflow um, error. Take note that in uh, Java, every time we have a recursive call, it um, generates a you know a new frame of a of uh, you know stack memory in the Java virtual machine. So meaning it uh, consumes um, uh, some space in memory. Okay, because we don't know. Uh, for example, the value if we pass a five, if we pass a four, if we pass a three. Okay. So later you you will just realize that what I'm just talking here is that um, since we have a two major requirements, every time we uh, create a recursive method, the first one is a recursive call and the second one is a base case, okay, uh, we need to, to think uh, of this. When are we going to stop the recursive call? 
Okay, so when it's that to solve this problem, we need to have a condition. Okay, so if if count is for example greater than zero, okay, so we will uh, for as long as the the value of count is greater than zero, so we will uh, call the uh, the recursive method again. Okay, but if the um, count is uh, not greater than zero, if, or if it's equal now to zero, so we can say that um, the else um, statement here now is your base condition or your stop condition. Okay, so if uh, count is not greater than zero or if it's equal to zero now, so what are we going to do? So we will just uh, print out a go. Okay, so this is uh, how we do it. Now we have now the base case and then we have the recursive call. Okay, are we um, done now? Let's try. Okay, let's try to run this one and there you go. So the first output uh, statement, the first line is uh, generated by the iterative method since we have the first um, iterative method call here. Okay, and then the second call from main is the recursive method with pass 5 but using the recursive um, method way. And then we uh, come up with this uh, output also the same output. Okay, so that's the um, um, proof that any problem that can be solved with iteration, take note of this, any problem that can be solved with iteration can also be solved by uh, recursion or vice versa. Okay, and then, so this example now is a, um, a head recursive method. Why? Because we uh, encounter the, we first encounter the uh, recursive uh, call before the, the base case. Okay, then because there's another way of doing this. Okay, same output, but um, it's, a, um, it's a reverse um, way. And what I'm talking about is the tail recursive method. In here, my base condition is uh, being executed or being read first, followed by the recursive call. Okay, so if you're doing this uh, uh, kind of uh, way, uh, this is an example of a tail recursive method, and this one is the head recursive method. Okay. Okay. So I hope that um, you've um, understand what I'm talking about. So let me uh, have this uh, three um, method calls from main method. We have the recursive method, we have the tail recursive method, and then the iterative method. And then we are expecting three lines of output. We're going to run this. Okay. So there you go. That's the output. So now you've learned how to um, solve that uh, problem by using iteration or by using the recursion. Okay, either the head recursive method, okay, where we um, uh, put the re recursive or where we um, put the recursive call in our um, first condition uh, for the Java virtual machine to execute that first prior to the base condition or uh, to have a tail recursive method wherein we um, um, emphasize the base condition of, uh, to be read first followed by the recursive call. So whichever you like, that's all, all still um, uh, valid. Okay, so this is an example actually of a void um, uh, method, recursion with a void method. So let me show you the, uh, the example that I prepared to you this time using a value returning method. Okay, now in this example, um, I have here the um, example program again with the iteration using for loop and then with the recursion. Okay, so can you um, guess what type of a recursive method is this? Okay, so since I put the uh, if condition here and um, this if condition will be uh, re read first by the Java virtual machine. So this is an example of a head recursive method because I put here the recursive call. And this is now the example of my base up case. So we have the return statements here because this is a value returning method now. Okay, so for example, if the method main will pass a three, okay, so the value of n is three. Okay, so using the um, uh, iteration, okay, so the first uh, line of uh, output is generated by this one, okay, using the iteration. So the sum of 1 to n, meaning 1, 2, 3. So 3, um, 1, 2, 3. So 1 plus 2 plus 3. So that's equal to 6. Okay, so uh, we've converted it using the recursion 
uh, having a recursive call and then the base case so we uh, both arrive with the same um, output but let me show you how um, the Java virtual machine execute this one how we um, arrive to the uh, final output of six okay um, every time so uh, let me use the um, notepad as an example okay because every time that um, we have a recursive call so think of it as um, in memory we have a uh, some kind of a stack okay we put it in a stack okay like for example for you to better understand what I'm uh, really talking if we pass a 3 now to sum okay so if n is equal to 3 so 3 is 3 greater than 0 yes so return n n plus sum so meaning uh, we know the value of n is it's it's 3 okay plus but we don't know yet the the value of uh, sum if we pass um, 3 minus 1 which is 2 if we pass 2 so the value of this still we don't know it's, uh, we need uh, to find out this first so we will put this in a stack okay somewhere in memory we will just put it in stack okay and then since it's a stack so this is the first stack okay and then uh, after we pass again for example here uh, sum with the value of uh, with the parameter of 2 so the value of n is 2 so is 2 uh, greater than 0 yes return n so we have now 2 plus the sum sum uh, 2 minus 1 is 1 okay so do, do we know now the value of sum uh, sub um, uh, sum with the parameter of 1 with the value of 1 we still don't know yet so we'll just put that in a stack again and we will pass again this one okay so since we are not done yet okay we will pass sum 1 to sum so if we pass that if is n is greater than 0 yes true so we have now uh, 1 plus sum and then n i minus 1 we need to pass again the sum with a value of a 0 we need to pass a 0 so we do we know the value of sum 0 not yet so we're going to pass it again okay so now this time uh, is n greater than 0 no so that's the the time that we will be using the base case now to stop the recursive call okay that's why if the uh, value of n is equal to zero or not greater than zero so we will return a zero so this is the stop uh, condition okay this is very important you have a base um, case just to um uh to uh, do away with the stop overflow um, runtime error okay now once we um arrive to the base case okay so it only means that when we pass a uh, zero to sum the value of this um, uh, recursive call is zero so we will just replace a uh, zero okay to sum okay so it's like and then after that we will uh, delete this now uh, from the um, the stack okay from the uh, you know memory okay so so it's like one plus zero is one okay so, so we will delete this okay and then we will now replace uh one to sum one because if you pass uh, one the value of it is the value returned by it is one okay so if you are going to um uh what do you call it? replace that to one so meaning to say that if you pass that the the value now is two plus one is a three okay so meaning if we pass some uh two with a value of two the value is three so we will uh now uh, delete this in memory the stack in memory and we will uh, replace it now with a three and then the, the final output now three plus three is six so six now is a being returned to the calling method in main so that is why when we run that the output is six that's how we uh, uh, solve it okay so so that's it uh, we've um, discussed um, before we um, end let's just uh, wrap up what we have discussed uh, we've learned that um, um, any problem that can be solved with iteration can also be solved with um, recursion so recursive method is another way 
for us to solve the re repetitive task. Okay, and um, whenever we create a recursive method, just uh, keep in mind two important uh, requirements. Okay, the recursive call and then the base case or the base condition or the stop condition. Okay, and then um, the where in the recursive call is a method calls itself with an input which is a step closer to the stop condition. And its recursive call will add a new frame to the stop memory of the JVM. So if we don't pay attention to how deep a recursive call can dive, an out of memory exception may occur. While uh, by using base condition, it is a condition that causes a recursive method not to make another recursive call. And the method returns a value when a certain condition is satisfied without a further recursive call. Now, if there is no base case, take note of this. If there is no base case in the recursive method, or if the base case is never rich, the stack would grow forever, at least in theory. Now, in practice, the size of stack is limited. So if you exceed the limit, that's the reason why you get a stack flow uh, error, stack overflow error, okay? And uh, we've also discussed the two types of recursive call in Java. The first one is the tail recursion and then the head recursion. We The tail recursion happens, okay, this version is when the recursive call is the last thing that method executes, okay? And uh, we call it a head recursion way um, when the recursive call is the first thing that method executes. So I've um, discussed this um, to you uh, a while ago, okay? And then, um, again, just to finalize, the recursion versus iteration, when we say recursion, recursion can help to simplify the implementation of some complicated problems by making the code clearer and more readable. But as we've already seen, the recursive approach often requires more memory as the stack memory required increases with its recursive call. So as an alternative, if we can solve a problem with recursion, we can also solve it by iteration. So there is the source code for this episode. And that's all for today. And if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And as always,